may not be suitable for all audiences. Hey, good, children, good. Remember to feel the clay. Be one with the clay. Nice. Art, 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 art 101 with Mr. Burger. <laughs> Welcome to Art 101 with me, Mr. Welcome to Art 101 with me, Mr. Berger. I'm a professional artist and educator attempting to provide you with the best in our historical content. Today, Hank and Etta and I are going to bring you a little good bit of content, as you know, because you clicked on the video. I just want you to know I hate you, and so does my dad. So today we're at Ledges State Park looking at these natural formations of art and we want to bring a little bit of uh, information to you about the uh, the artist Robert Smithson who does this sort of thing except very much planned, not just nature. So let's talk about the earthwork artworks of Robert Smithson. How about that? Yeah. All right. Okay, let's do it. Although he only lived to be 35 years old, Robert Smithson was one of the major environmental site artists of the 20th century. Born in New Jersey in a middle class family, his father was a car mechanic and encouraged his son's love and passion for nature. One of those first moments that really influenced him was at the age of eight, he went on a family trip around the United States. This would have a profound influence on his future and his love of nature. He went on to become trained at the Art Students League in New York, starting some of that coursework when he was still in high school. But I think it also should be noted that Smithson had a very limited art training, having made the decision to go into the United States Army Reserves after high school, but did end up attending some classes at the Brooklyn Museum a little bit later on in life. As his career began, he quickly became drawn to the use of nature within his works and enjoyed minimalism. Some of the artists that would really have an influence on him were Robert Morris, Saul LeWitt, and his wife, Nancy Holt. Using this inspiration to really harness the direction of two distinct categories, sites and non-sites. was his obsession, really. The non-sites actually began with actual sites. From this location, wherever it might be, there are three types of artifacts that he would have collected. These included documents, geological artifacts, and a container. Now, the container wouldn't have been actually collected from the site, but used to house or store or display the works, but you understand what I mean. The documents are placed along the gallery walls. These would have been maps, photographs, and other text-based resources of the actual site. The geological collections are placed along the floor in the gallery space or placed into the built containers. Often, these geological objects were presented along with mirrors or other sorts of things as a visual connector between the earth and the sky. At any rate, in the 1960s, he began to make plans for his even larger scale site works. Smithson decided that he was going to move far beyond what he or anyone really was considering acceptable art media. His artwork was not going to be made out of paint or clay or paper or anything like that. His artwork was going to be made out of the earth itself. He began to create what are now known as earthworks. Simply put, an earthwork is an artwork that is made from nature and is located often in a site-specific location selected by the artist or a site-specific work, oftentimes made from natural materials. Obviously, because this artwork design was created for this very specific location, the only place that the artwork could be seen in person was actually going to that specific location to view it. Paintings, sculptures, and most things that we think of as art traditionally can move from gallery to gallery or space to space all around the world, but these earthworks obviously don't allow that to happen. It's like if you want to see Mount Rushmore in person, then you've got to take yourself to Rapid City, South Dakota to see it. It's not going on tour anytime soon, nor will it ever be on location anywhere else. Spiral Jetty is the best example that we have of a Robert Smithson site-specific piece. 
In 1970, he ended up finishing this enormous 1,500 foot long and 15 foot wide spiral jetty of rock and dirt that projected into the Great Salt Lake at Rosal Point in Utah. He would use 6,650 tons of material to create this very enormous structure. In 2008, an oil drilling company applied to drill near the artwork which could have disturbed the isolated viewing area and possibly contaminate the water where the cleaning would be a lot more destructive to the artwork that was bringing in lots of people around the world to see it. So the Utah state government looking at the long-term preservation of the spiral jetty said no thank you and actually did the right thing by the artwork. Another of his sites contains two artworks in the sand quarries outside of the town of Emmen in the Netherlands. Smithson created Broken Circle Spiral Hill. They have no art. There was a man-made dam in a lake along the Texas Panhandle that became very interesting to Smithson and he went to check that out. It was his goal to build an earthwork on this site. While viewing and photographing the site from a plane, it stalled and crashed on the land that he was going to be using as his canvas. Tragically, he passed away in the wreckage along with another photographer and the pilot. The artwork design was posthumously finished by fellow artist and wife Nancy Holt and their friends Richard Serra and Tony Shafrazi. You come back later today and I'll play you the tapes. Who knows what kind of artworks he could have produced long term had he not been in this horrific accident, but be that as it may, his legacy lives on. His creative spirit, his love of nature would persevere and certainly influence others. And when you're in nature and you're making artwork and doing those things, it's a very basic concept, the building of a sandcastle or the stacking of rocks or whatever it might be. These are very elementary sorts of ideas, but these things can be done and learned and loved regardless of your level of artistic experience. So consider that as you're going off into nature on your own or just contemplating what art is. Like, share, and subscribe. Have a fun day. Bye.